three, two, one, and we're recording. Guys, welcome back to another episode of the Bad Design Podcast presented by The Pick Six. I'm your host, Sean. This week, I have a special guest. Uh, well, I guess every week I have a special guest, but from Mizzou, uh, newly hired graphic designer for the Orlando Magic, and I'm going to call you a hype beast with the shoes, <laughs> Tony Wynn. How you doing, man? What's going on? Oh, wow, man. That was a great intro, man. I'm, I'm doing pretty well, you know, just trying to get past this next month before I graduate. So, you know, things are going good, though. So, you know, I'm excited for, uh, you know, just to finish this out and graduate and see what life takes me. So, yeah, that's awesome. I It's got to be really cool to know you're set up with a job once you graduate, too, right? Like, it's like self-assurance, like, oh, man, like all this, this weight is lifted off my back. I don't need to, like worry about finding a job for the next you know months year after i graduate yeah yeah man it's, it's always nice because you know the best part about being part of this community is that you know you always know about connections and networking with people and it's like you always make you always ask people like how come you don't have a job yet this this and this and it's because they don't have something like this so you know the awesome benefit of twitter is opening that source to you so you know that's pretty cool to have but you know, the interesting is, is like, I actually found this jump on LinkedIn is that, you know, I didn't look through Twitter at all or even notice it, but, uh, I got the job through LinkedIn. It, that, that process took like within less than two weeks. And, uh, the fortunate thing enough was like, I was already in Florida for spring break. So I got a chance to go into Orlando to see their office for my final interview before being off the job before I went back to Missouri. So, wow. What a convenient, uh, setup that ended up being. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. It was at a certain time, so you know it's just funny how it worked out. So yeah, it's awesome just to have, you know, a giant lot job lined up and not really worry about anything. And so you know, start moving down there. So who uh, who is the creative director for the Magic now? Because it's not Justin uh, Garland anymore, right? I think he left. Yeah, shout out to Justin because this um, he's someone who I mentioned or you know talked to beforehand. Uh, he didn't know me enough, and I, I totally respect that because we didn't really talk at all. But he was just, he was just saying that ever since he left, like things have completely changed about the direction they want to go with social. And uh, I actually don't know, you know, like that's the thing that's crazy because no one in the Magic has like a social presence or you know someone that you really know in SM Sports. So that's the thing that's crazy. Is me. you know I, I, when I when I went out there, they actually already had two full time graphic designers. So when I saw that, I was really confused, and I was like, what's going on? And the thing with my role is, is specifically, uh, you know, engage with uh, digital content. So I'm just, I really don't know what to expect when I get down there. But, you know, obviously, when I do, I'll probably, you know, find out soon. So. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't, wow. So you, who hired you? Like, was there, it was just HR, or was there, like, uh, there's got to be a director of digital, I assume. <laughs> I, I honestly know <laughs> there isn't what <laughs> I, I i spoke with someone from hr right and they just had like a general knowledge you know just with hr and stuff like that because they're learning to more a little bit more about your personality so that's the process that i went through um so when i uh interviewed with them the first the first thing i got in, in contact with them was about you know my salary and then they're like okay sounds good and then you they made me do like a design project and then they followed up with like a personality kind of like test like where they like oh hey so how do you describe yourself how do your friends families describe yourself so i did that and then i spoke with someone who's worked with uh, live and entertainment and someone who's the director of marketing or like game production and stuff like that i, I don't really know the titles man i'm still confused to this day honestly Wow. Um, but yeah, man, it's, those are three people that I spoke to in my interview. So it was HR, uh, someone from Live Live and Entertainment, who who they said that, you know, they wanted to hire this role because you know they've been looking for someone to uh, catch up with on social, on with their presence because they they even said themselves was that they were falling behind, so they wanted to see stuff because you know like how the Kings and the Rockets are they're always up to date with NBA content. Yeah so they're falling a little bit behind so that's why they wanted to bring me in so that's interesting i i that's uh i definitely want to hear more about that when you get down there and interested in like where there's what their structure is I, I didn't realize they didn't have people in place and director positions but yeah um, it's, it, i really don't know 
but hey, you know, you always got to find out eventually. So. Right, right. Well, you definitely will. No, know what I found was interesting? When I was looking at your site and you have the About Me page, you didn't even major in graphic design, right? You majored in sports management, I believe it said. That's correct. That's correct. So that's interesting. You don't. So your degree's in sports <laughs> management and you'll be working in graphic design. What? What drew you to graphic design, and then like, why were you originally in sports management? Well, oh, graduating in sports management. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, to be honest with you, I just I did a week in mar- uh, marketing specifically, or in business here in Brazil. Absolutely hated it in my life for some reason. I don't know why. So I decided <laughs> to do sport management, which was a lot easier. And um, you know, I and I always get this question too from a lot of like you know those high schoolers too, and who are you know just about to finish. No high school, so it's like I don't get the point of college, so so so. There's no point in me doing the graphic design major. And I'm like, but you gotta understand, like you know, everywhere now, you get, it's like the low minimum, or even the, uh, you know, just like the, the standard just to get a college degree. Yeah. Right? So, I was thinking about you know just having a major that where I can able, I'll be able to understand kind of like the operations, the facility of it, uh, just you know what's going around on game day operations and stuff like that, and. Um, you know, I, I thought that graphic design was just, it was something that I already self-taught myself. It'd be better if I just get experience and field and see it myself and work off of that, rather than just learning the basics in class and just like you know the, the basics of how to make a shape or how to do text and stuff like that. Right. I thought it'd be a waste in time and money, so I didn't see any point of it. So I just got a sport management degree just to like you know fluctuate and just to be more knowledgeable about like everything that goes on in sports. So. Yeah, I, th- that's like not a bad idea at all. I know I personally regret not double majoring in marketing as well as graphic design because you're right. Yeah, I, I didn't learn anything like in college about graphic design. I learned the basics, most of which I knew. They don't teach you really the programs. That's all you got to learn on your own. And, uh, you know, marketing's such so big, especially in, in sports, that I wish I would have taken more classes on that, on something I know nothing about than learning about something I knew pretty much everything about and had to learn on my own. Yeah, exactly. And I just think that, you know, everything just kind of like happens itself. It's just all, also how you stumble upon like a person or a network or, you know, or how you meet someone. So it's just crazy how like a lot of people really, uh, you know, they just, they have a, like a degree in marketing, but they end up working in sports somehow and they do graphic design. Cause I know Allie, my boss, she, um, I think I believe she did a graphic design major, but and she was also a student athlete too. But she never, she never knew she would end up here in Mizzou Athletics. So it was just crazy to see how, you know, passes end up happening. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's it's funny to follow people's career paths because I've I've heard a number of different pa- like paths of how people. I think I even knew someone who majored as like a doctor and like didn't go to grad school and then switch to graphic design it it's amazing how you really can just pick this up whenever and you know learn on your own and just get a job it's it's annoying that we have to go to college just to get that four-year degree the waste of our time you know especially something with art yeah and the thing is like people don't realize that like you know when, when you when you when it's all said and done right like what happens when you take away you know twitter and social right what do you, what are you stuck with then but that's the thing I'm thinking of. It's like you. It's good that you have that college degree anyway, just to you know throw your name out there and to compete against other people who are in the field too. So you know what I'm saying. This is like if we didn't have Twitter, then you know it, it'd probably be best to go the route of you know having um, a degree opposed to just you know just trying to look for freelance work at a young age or straight out of high, you know, high school and stuff like that. So you know it's one of those type of things. So right. It's, how um you know how do you like it at Mizzou? I you know I've never been to the Midwest, believe it or not. I, I don't I don't know that it's a big tourist spot, but like, what is like your favorite thing to do out there? Like things like that. Man, like uh, I don't I don't really I didn't think of like what was my favorite part about kind of like Missouri in general until like people started talking about how passionate it was when I started to get to college, right? Because. I went to a small high school, so I only knew so much then. But then when I went to high school, when I went to college, everyone would be like, first question people will always have in, in college, if you're from Missouri, it's like, oh, what high school did you go to? And people would instantly know where, they, where that is and stuff like that. It was insane, man. And I don't know how uh, anyone, anyone who's listening to this podcast knows that 
uh, recently, a few weeks ago, that we had like this whole people just started going on a rant about how we have like our sliced bagels, about how we just like slice every little sl- a piece of it. And it was crazy, man. It was just so <laughs> fun. And uh, that really put us on the map, to be to be honest. But uh, you know, I, I like I like Missouri because the thing is like. Actually, I take that back. I do not like Missouri. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about, it, I'm like, wait, the weather is always so, 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 right? One side of the world, one side of the country, you have, you know, it's blizzarding rain, snowing, stuff like that. And the other side, you know, it's really hot, so, so, so. But when you're in Missouri, you get the both of the best world. So it's like, it's crazy to, to go through that, being part of the Midwest. But, um, you know, it, it's it's great, specifically when you're in St. Louis or Kansas City or even Columbia from, like, where I am right now. Um, you know, these are just great cities just to be a part of because the sad thing is, is, like, everyone who lives here has, like, been, has been, like, gone through a culture of just, like, a winning culture. So either if you're a Royals fan and you're a Cardinals fan, especially when you're a Cardinals fan, like, you have that expectation of winning, right? So you grow up with that. And, you know, our fans, it just... I don't mean to like talk, you know, dirty about our fans, but it's just like people only show up when we're winning, man. Like we got this, Kel- we got Kelly Bryant now. It's like we don't even know how that will go, you know. So people only want to see a winning product on the field rather than just supporting the whole, you know, team. Really? City, you know, whatever that is. So, but yeah, Missouri is great, man. It's 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 not a bad state at all. Not really a tourist site, but uh, more of just like you know, it's great for like developing business and connections and like always great food and you know it, kansas city is known for the best barbecue even i would say that so yeah uh, I, so you, people only show up when they're winning i wouldn't think that about missouri i feel like their fans are passionate oh no no we really care for winning man like that's the thing it was like i unfortunately been through like the thing is like when i got into mizzou that was like when mizzou was doing so well man and you know obviously we had our four years of tough challenges and you know Things that we went through were through dr- drought and like you know coach firing and stuff like that. It was crazy, man. You expect like fans to be closer, but then it just was the total opposite. Like people weren't showing up and stuff like that. They were always talking bad, trash and stuff like that. And I hated that. You know, that's the thing mm-hmm. is that you know everyone here is just like has this winning mindset. Like even with our basketball team, you know, this recently this past year, you know, people were really excited about how we perform, and then. You know, John T. Porter goes down as everyone just like loses their attitude. You know, so, they, right. so that's the thing. So that's how Missouri operates, and fortunately, that's how it is. So, you know. Wow. And you, you were, you were the intern on the uh, athletics department there. So, what yeah. is the atmosphere like when a coach gets fired? Like that's got to be very strange. I, I would feel like. So, uh, let's just say that throughout these four years, a coach firing is just like one of those like things that's just. It's not. It's rare that it happens, but when it does, it's just like you don't know what to do, right? Yeah. I, I believe that anyone can relate to this issue. It's just like, like you have to like change like the whole culture and really have to like figure out, you know, what are ways that we can keep promoting our team in a positive way. So throughout my four years, I know that the like, Mizzou has been on the news for really bad things, and it's like, how do we keep like a positive image on that when it comes to social and like working with their fans and their community and stuff like that, showing that display on social. So that's what we've been trying to do. And everyone knows about the shape, the, the whole NCAA deal, right? That's, uh, it's, it's something that we're working on, but you know, we started like a whole campaign around it, which is called the uh, make it right. Right. Mm-hmm. So we put that on our graphics or sponsors or posters and all that stuff. So, you know, it's one of the cool things that, you know, that I love about Mizzou specifically because everyone here is, like a family we're treated like family you know what i'm saying so that's the thing but but other than that it's like you know people are only here to see if we're winning or not so but that's just missouri in general or even the crappy fans in general so yeah i I like uh that you spun a negative into a positive you know i feel like that's always important when trying to rebuild your brand and, and build a positive culture that's uh indicative i feel like of what you want to create yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, I was here when uh, you know Kim Emerson was still a basketball coach, and you know we went through, my went through that whole process with my boss, and then uh, we finally got Conzo Martin that following year. It was just like the whole thing changed because you know we got Michael Porter. We were on ESPN more. It was all crazy because people were hype around that, 
And then when you take Michael Porter away, like, yeah, you lose a lot of fans who don't know anything about basketball other than the name of MPJ, and that's it. But, you know, it was still cool to see that everyone rattled around this team, and, you know, they ended up doing okay. You know, it's just like those kind of things. But, yeah. Wow. I, um, I pulled up here some of the most Googled questions on Missouri. Uh, so I want to get your answers on these because I, like I said, I've never been there. I don't know much about it, but, um, the first one, I think I know the answer to this, but does it snow? Yes, it does. It's, uh, some days it's like really icy. You know, falling your butt a few times. It happened to me. One day actually happened to me on campus. I was thinking about finding like a lawsuit, but I was like, no, it's not <laughs> You know, I just, I'm a, I'm a broke college student, you know, trying to, trying to make it here and there. So, you know, it's one of those things, but yeah. That's funny. Um, number two, are there tornadoes? Uh, yeah, in certain parts of Missouri, but, you know, when you're in the big cities, you know, not really. Um, this one I thought was interesting. What is the nickname of Missouri? Missouri? What is the nickname of Missouri? The, I, oh, I, you what know? is the nickname? Um... I don't know. For some reason, one of their when people like to troll us, we're called Misery. Um, oh, I and, see uh, Missouri, by the way, for people that don't know, because there's people who say Missouri. Um, oh. Uh, we really like the when you think of Missouri, you think of people from St. Louis saying St. Louis Breadco, not Panera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's it's great, but uh, I don't know. I don't know actually. I really don't know. The nickname other than we are the show me state so that's that's what it says the show me yeah. state uh, okay yeah um the the fourth one here is is missouri hilly Hilly, yes dude like i if i just drive down like five blocks i can see the campus like because it's the hill it's crazy man it's just, on a clear day you can see as far as like you can see really long so it's crazy wow and then uh this last one does it rain a lot um uh, i mean not really not, not as much as people think, but yeah, it's not bad. Okay. Does it get, I guess it get warm there in the summer, right? And, oh my gosh, dude. You take a shower. I swear, even if you're sitting in your house, you take a shower, a cold shower. You get outside, you get dressed, you're already sweating, dude. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> That's a bit of a dude. Um, did, you know, going back to you majoring in uh, sports management, what, uh, what made you want to go into design like was when you went started at college did you know like design is what you wanted to do or was it like finding yeah, yeah, sure man okay. um design was actually it was something that i was back and forth with uh i did it in high school i did it in high school just for fun you know i started as you know when i became a huge nba fan back in like 07 08 and i became like a huge kobe and then the lakers fan right and i know you're a boston fan so you know, <laughs> Hopefully, uh, agree on our differences here. But uh, anyway, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was something I did in high school, right? And uh, I was always that kid who uh, was helping develop our, like, you know, our, kind of like our Twitter stuff and Facebook, you know, just the basic stuff, right? It wasn't huge uh, then as it is now. Uh, I always did it for fun. And then, uh, you know, when I went to high school, college, I was thinking, you know, I don't know if I want to do graphic design yet. You know, I kind of want to focus on marketing. And, you know, obviously you, you heard how that went. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just more of like a up and down kind of thing. And then when I finally thought about it, I'm like, you know, this is something I believe I can, you know, really develop into, you know, as a great, as a, as like a person who I want to be, that I can be able to talk to through like a platform and then be able to speak my mind on my graphics and my, uh, kind of like my art skills and stuff like that and to really display that and um, it was it was cool just to see you know me being someone who really loves social media and seeing the uh, you know the engagement and interactions that you get was just so t- icing on the top because you know I was that kid before SN Sports really became a thing I was always that kid too who posted graphics on forums and um, you know I did a, a few highlight mixtapes here and there but but yeah, that's how I really got into graphic design, man, was forums, you know? Like, most people who are, like, OG OGs are the people who start on forums. And uh, I actually was on the forum that Tyson Beck was running, which was, like, it was a Kobe Bryant forum. And then I saw, I always saw his work, dude. It was so dope. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's, like, a huge inspiration to me. So, yeah, that's how I kind of got into it. So I kept with it in college, yeah. 
Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, that's got to be a while back because I think Tyson's been talking about that form for like 15 years or something yeah. crazy like that. I remember when he posted that photo of him with this afro. That was a crazy photo. <laughs> you know, it was just him meeting Kobe. It was just insane. So, yeah. Yeah, he's kind of kept a relationship up with him. Yeah, I know he said he met with him recently too. So clearly, he's doing something right. Yeah, that's funny. Um, so you you worked as an intern. Well, I guess you still kind of you still do right until you graduate. Yeah, the cool thing is, is this semester I'm just really spending time with the athletics. This is my capstone internship, right? So uh, I've been spending this the past four months or so. Just working here in Mizzou Athletics, just trying to finish strong with the semester. So, but yeah, man, like just um, last year, just recently last year, man, it was crazy because I guess this is probably we'll go into eventually to the next few questions. But um, when I was doing freelance work for the college football playoff, the Panthers and Mizzou, it was just so hectic because you know you, when you're a full time student, you're doing all that, man. It was just it was crazy. Like I'm not gonna sit here and just brag about. You know, I, I did so many, so, so, so hours of this, this, and this. But to me, it was all fun and rewarding, you know. Like, um, when the college football playoff had reached out to me, I didn't even think for a second thought about if I should do this or not. Like, I automatically accepted it because it was funny because recently the other day I saw a graphic that it did when um, it was in, uh, what was it, in 2016 when it was it Washington, Clemson, and Alabama and Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. That's Washington exactly. played Bama. Yeah, and that's when I did a graph for college football playoff. When I saw that, it was just like, you know, holy crap, and smiling, happy. But, but yeah, man, I would say, that, you know, that's what I've been doing recently. Um, ever since that happened in January, I decided to do just to focus on my time here as an intern from the Zoo Athletic. So, yeah, how you know you kind of touched on it briefly there, but managing your time between two freelance jobs plus your full-time student and you're an intern there that like where do you find the time of day to get all that done to be honest i don't know man like you somehow just managed to do it you know it's just like one of those things where you just kind of sit down and just like say hey i really gotta focus on this this and this and uh you know you just kind of like sit down like just really uh see where your time sensitive is that you know where projects were because when i was working for mizzou and obviously i didn't mention this you know in that post i caused a lot of conversations and um but um you know i was really devoting my time just to my freelancing work because you know it was just what i was consumed with always right i was always told hey you gotta do this this and this and it, it sucked because like my my production of mizzou athletics wasn't like wasn't living up to its potential and you know that's something that my boss didn't have didn't mention to me until the following year so there's like always pros and cons to you know managing your time and stuff like that right when you're a full-time student you're going to class like when, what i did specifically was you know discipline myself and really learn how to like to time manage myself so what i would do let's just say it's monday right uh monday i monday through friday i go to work every other day from the uh, morning to the afternoon. And then I uh, go home, do, because uh, the college football playoff, what they did was um, I talked with my boss there and they sent me like a list of stuff I gotta get done that week. So I would always do that for the, throughout the week. And then when it came to Sunday, I uh, immediately closed off everything, get things done ahead of time. And on Sunday, I just worked the whole game day for the Panthers. But then that followed on until all the way until I would say like January or December. So, but yeah, man, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I can imagine because I know recently, and I'm I'm really trying to work on this. I have the habit of not being able to say no. Yes. And yeah. you know, you get work, you get opportunity, especially when you're young like we are, and you're early in your career, and it's like man, I just need to accept as much work as I can because it's like, I need the experience. I need the exposure, right. you know, some opportunities. I mean, working for the college football playoffs, that's pretty awesome. And the Panthers, you know, those are big time yeah. outlets. And, uh, you know, you get these opportunities and you run yourself dry. And, and that's what I did about two months ago. I was just creatively, I was shot. My, my work was dropping, right? The quality of work because I was taking on too much. And, um, 
you know, it's, I think a problem most people probably run into some point in their career where they're like, man, I got to take a step back. I got to value my time and how I use my time. You know, you just, you can't accept every project. You got to really value everything you're doing. And I, I find that interesting how, you know, you, like you said, you got to be really focused on what yeah. you have in front of you. Man, you nailed it on the head though. Like, you know, that's what the sad, like it's all, it's all fun and games until like, you know, you keep saying yes to the point where you don't know when you're going to be, like you've mentioned, dried out or, you know, overwhelmed. So there's so many opportunities that, you know, you, that come here and there. It's like, oh man, I really want to accept this. So, so, and so, but you know, I'm, you know, it, it, it's all about how you manage your time. And I, I think at a young age, it's just, it just happens, man. You, you learn from that eventually. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know. I found myself doing all nighters, and you know, it wasn't. I am. It was not fun. Uh, you know, getting like an hour or two of sleep because you're grinding away at things, and like I said, it's not really quality work because you usually rushed. You know, there's timelines. You need to. Yeah. People need to approve and edit things, and um, it's a struggle. I, you know, it's probably like a pretty good segue to but with Aaron Bills, you know, when he went on his Twitter rant on how he doesn't understand how people uh, have time for freelance work um, because he's always given 110% to his job. I'm, you know, paraphrasing here, but, um, you know, he's like, I always give 110% and I'm always just working to do my best for my job. How do people find time for freelance work? But I don't like, what is your take on that when you, when you saw what he had to say? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, let me get this out of the way first, right? Before, I obviously had expressed my thoughts on this and made a thread of tweets. And I noticed that, you know, after putting it out, that I definitely let out, let out like a few gray areas that people, you know, touched on and, you know, really explained, right? You know, before everyone, you know, even after everyone had like quote tweeted me, just really explained themselves just to like, you know, not really throw shots at me, quote unquote. But, right. You know, kind of explain it further. It's just like, um, you know, I, I at this point, like throughout these four months, right, I definitely understand where Aaron is coming from. I 100% agree. But he did, I would say that he did go a little bit too far because, you know, when I think it all has to do with age perception and how you view your own time, right? And I, I noticed that, like, it's important just to focus on yourself and what you want to do, what's best for you and stuff like that. So when he kind of like, and that's something that I didn't touch on mine. And that was just advice that I was giving just based on my experience. Right. And then after talking to a few people about it, it, it made sense as to why, you know, people were against this kind of like, you know, reason is, you know, you got, you have hundred percent to your team. You got to devote your time to this, this, and this, but it's like, at the end of the day, man, it was just, uh, it's all about your your own hustle and how you make your own time, right? You always want to develop. You always want to learn stuff like that. You can give 110% to your team, but, you know, what if graphic design was your true hobby? You know, you do that on your own free time that you always want to do. You always see one of your favorite players, your favorite teams doing something great, and you want to make a graph for it just because, you know, you know why not? And you do it for fun. And that's fine with me, and that's where I came in. And I was thinking about that too, just a little about how you know there's a fine line to it, right? And what I really wanted to emphasize on, what I forgot to was, which kicked me, you know, kicked me in the foot later, was that um, you know, it was about, you know, when you're giving 110 percent to your team, and then let's say for instance you're so more worried about doing your personal projects during the time when you you should be working. That's when it's an issue. Mm. That's what people forget. That's why I think that like this got overlooked and like what I was trying to talk about, you know. And I'll be honest, man. Like I had nothing to hide, and like I know how I got to where I am today, and I'm honestly thankful for it because I know if I didn't, you know, spend my own free time, um, you know, making graphics for fun, right, or uh, networking with people, just really, you know, boosting myself up on social media, boosting up my ego, it wouldn't have happened. You know, when I got matches from Trenches and Skull Sports and, uh, you know, Juke Design and all this stuff, I loved that. I loved bidding off of that. So I continued doing it, right? And eventually that made its way into when I was asked, questioning myself, um, when I, as I got older, I questioned myself, did I give my team all that I can do, though? Because you remember during the time when, um, 
you know when Drake released Scary Hours? Yeah. Um, I that... think this is when it kind of hit me. It was like, I didn't do, like, since that was became like a real trend, that co- that, that the... title cover. Yeah. I didn't do it from Mizzou first. You know, I did it of, you know, the Raptors, of Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. And the next day when I had that meeting with football, they're like, oh, man, we wish you would have did this idea for us, you know, instead of just you know, doing it on your own, you know, just to flex and stuff like that and for your personal clout. And, um, you know, that's where it kind of like hit me at the point. And, but then like, as I got older, I'm like, man, you just got to do what's best for you. And like, I don't like, I, I made of like, it, I know it's confusing though, <laughs> to be honest, like <laughs> I, I get it. But like, what I'm trying to say is like, after looking at comments and talking to people and just really seeing their side, it's like, Man, it's your, it's, it's your own work ethic. It's like, you got to do what's best for you, right? You just don't have to worry about anybody, anybody about, but yourself, honestly. But what got overlooked by my point was just, you know, just putting in your own, like, you know, working working on your own personal projects during the times that you should be putting into work for your jo- the job that you're working for. And um, for- unfortunately, I know people who kind of do that stuff and, um, but I'm not gonna, you know, mention names or start anything. But you know, it, it, it's something that, you know, they they grown into a better person for me and seeing that side. But uh, you know, I I thought it was something that it was important to mention because so many times we just we get so focused with our like, you know, personal uh, personal freelance time and like doing all that kind of stuff. But then really, what's more important is like, you know, devoting 110 percent, like Aaron had said. And um, you know, giving it all to your team. So that's why that's why it's like it's kind of confusing when I'm trying to explain it. I bet you anyone who's listening to this podcast would not know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I I mean, Sean, like you know, like it's like to a certain extent, it's awesome that you get to do like these freelance projects for yourself, for your free time, for your hobby, right? Because it helps you find your own inspiration. But what, like I said, it's like it's overlooking just like. You know, when you're, it gets in the way sometimes because, you know, you want to work on your personal projects during the time when you are working for your full-time job, right? Or for your, you know, internship, that kind of thing. Right. I So, <laughs> it's all over the place, man. No, I know. So. I, well, I, to me, this is, you know, I saw what Aaron said and my, like my, I agreed with him in some points, but I disagree. You know, he's. He's like, you should always give 110% to your your full-time gig, right? You're part of that team. And I agree. From the hours of 9 to 5, and with the exception of when we have events and I have to travel and work different hours, I am giving that 110%. I'm not letting freelance get in the worry. I'm not letting personal projects get in the way. I'm working on USA football. You know, that's where I work. On everything I can to, to create the best content for them. Then after those hours, that's you know what I want to do with my time. I want to do with my time. Now, if Aaron wants to give a insane amount of hours, which I imagine he's probably not paid for, to give 110% to Michigan, that's, you know, that's his choice. But don't, to me, it was like, don't badger me or, or, or look down on me because in my free time, I decide I want to make more money and do freelance work or I want to make something for myself and yes. my own personal clout. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing that, you know, I'm... Trying was trying to get out front words and like yeah I and then when then when Aaron was like he, he made a great point there because when Aaron had agreed with me it was just like dude like I kind of got what you're saying but like I kind of didn't and like you know people do things um, for these for these reasons and so 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 right you gotta do your own hot side hustle you gotta pay off your student loans you gotta you know for me <laughs> you know you gotta buy these next kicks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah man i definitely agree and like that's what i was saying man that i left a lot of gray areas in mind and like i heard it, people's feelings about it like at the same time it wasn't like i wasn't it wasn't like i was trying to right i i meant to say like trigger as in a way of like i know that some people who who um you know like i mentioned like you know how you match like nine to five kind of like doing your full-time gig and like focusing on that right but when you put your personal projects, devoting your personal projects into the time that you should be working nine to five. That's when it's an issue. So but yeah, right. that's, that's, I, I totally agree with what you said though. So. Yeah. Like I, I, I had an idea of what Aaron was trying to say. I just, I didn't like that. He made it seem like doing freelance work was, 
or personal work was, you know, um, a bad thing that, you, you know, it, your, your company should chastise you for, for doing that. Right, right, exactly. And that's the thing that I said, like I mentioned in the beginning, was like age, the perception of how you view your work, you know, your ethics and stuff like that. And it changes with everyone. I think us, you know, being younger, we're ambitious. You know, we want to learn more. We want to do more because we want to, we find that, uh, we find that enjoyment out of ourselves to like, you know, make content in our own free time, then show the world. But then, because you know, you're not you're not always going to be able to show everything that you do nine to five, right? So mm. the only way you can do that is when you're making, you know, your personal graphics, which I mentioned, like you know, it's funny to a certain extent, I think. But you know, when you're over, you're working yourself more than you're doing your freelance work, rather than you're doing your, you know, nine to five job. Then I I kind of see both sides of it, but. Dude, I'm just saying that, like, Essence Sports was like a, to- like a total, um, let me use my nice words here. It's like, it was like a, like a burst of flames. Oh, it was a whirlwind. Yeah, it was crazy, man. But, a, a tornado came through town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was wild, dude. Like, no kidding. And, um, you know, that, that stirred a lot of conversation. That's the great part about it, right? Yeah. You know, uh, people had a platform to speak on their opinions on, on the community and, what people think, right? And um, and it's so funny because I remember making a tweet about you know, you know, Loki. Everyone tries to subtweet about each other when we're always when we're always about promoting each other and stuff like that on SM Sports. So uh, that, that's just it's a funny touch. Too. Oh, it, it it is true, and I you know I'm definitely I've fallen subject to that because there, <laughs> you know, as great as it is the community of people who try to uplift each other, there is a lot of stuff that can rub people the wrong way. I know there's people out there, I won't mention names, who do things that I think are in poor interest or, you know, they're doing, I, it's something that I just don't disagree, I agree with. And look, that is what it is. Right. Um, but overall, I think everyone tries to uplift each other and be positive, um, except for the few that are the one person that hated on the AAF guys uh, for, for getting, <laughs> uh, you know, released. But, um, you know, one, one other thing I wanted to touch on uh, was you talking about personal projects and how it, it helped you get to where you are. And I know that's a big part of where I am is, you know, for three years while I was in college and I had just graduated, I put so much time and effort to that. And that led to me getting my full time job, all my freelance work, you know, personal projects because they're in your own vision. Right. You don't have to worry about other people's opinion can really elevate you to another level and, um, you know, I think it's important, especially when you're younger and you have the time to, to capitalize on that experiment and, and really find your, your style uh, that could help you land a position anywhere, you know, help you get noticed. I agree, man. Like, 100%. It's just like, again, as mentioned, that's, that's like gray areas that I didn't touch on my post, you know, that's, which I completely understand and like live up for that, for that mistake, but. You know, I, 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 I took that pr- approach of just kind of like seeing both sides. And like, as you can see from when you're listening to this podcast, it's like my mind's all over the place when I think about this kind of stuff. So, but, you know, it was uh, it was an interesting two weeks for sure. But I think we learned a lot. You know, we learned a lot by ourselves and we kind of get the we kind of get a taste of everyone's personality for a bit. And, you know, it's always funny. It's I think it's always funny that, like, you know, when we have. Not to, not to throw names, but it's just for fun, right? It's because, uh, you know, when people step in, you know, especially the adults who have been doing this for, you know, a little longer than we have, you step in like, you know, oh, like they kind of act like the adults, you know? It's like, well, like they're supposed to, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, did your mom not to tell you not to talk like that and stuff like that? Do you, why do you guys treat each other like this? Yeah. You got to be more positive and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it was all fun and games, man. Like, I totally agree with that point, but it's just so fun to see <laughs> just seeing adults step in <laughs> specifically talk yeah. to like the younger the younger crowd on yeah. sports you know it, it was fun to see so but yeah man um so moving on from that i you know i want to talk about this because <laughs> this is this is fun to me but you know you and your shoes um yes. you you know i i will say i didn't really get into shoes till probably about this time last year, I was never into the hype beast thing, but you definitely you and a few others on social really started getting me into sneakers. Um, you know, I see you copping a lot. What to, like what is the favorite pair of shoes you have you own and one like you don't own that you you know you you wish you could own? Uh, 
there's there's so many you know just growing up from where you know just growing up from my time it's just like you know i my my, my income resources were low right i was working at dick sporting goods you know part-time and you know that wasn't doing it for me because you know friends always wanted to hang out and it's always food the option you know so um but anyway i like i had low income so when i uh when I, as I got into college and started doing more stuff, right, and just really know where to put my money and stuff like that, uh, not saying that I'm not a responsible person, but, you know, when it comes to shoes, this is, like, that's the first thing I'm thinking of buying when I get my money that I have just to spend, right? But uh, I would say the shoes, my favorite pair of shoes I have now are either the off-white um, 90s from wow. the original 10 or the... Uh, the Sean Weatherspoons, right? 97s. Yeah. And, uh, dude, it's... Before I mention, like, what shoes I want, it's just so cool, man. Like, it's cool to see that somehow sneaker culture and, you know, that kind of, like, you know, that, um... What's called the hypeiest culture, right? Right. It's right. about flexing about what you wear and stuff like that, about the brand name and stuff like that. That's kind of made its way into the SM Sports community and the people know this, right? People <laughs> see that, Yeah. So. That's pretty awesome for me, man. Like, because I love that kind of stuff, and when I see that cost my time, I'm always liking that stuff, kind of investing my time in it. But it's cool to see. Like, I know there's so many designers out here just like flexing on some like, off whites. Like, <laughs> <"Sir." laughs> and then, dude, and then you notice too sometimes that people post photos all about that. Like for guys specifically, like we do, like the untucked polo and like uh, you know khaki pants. You know we rolled up. You roll. We roll up the ends a little bit. You know just to flex on our sneakers. Right. Favorite part, bro. It's just like <laughs> that fashion side of it. I love how we're taking culture from fashion to bring it into sports and, and kind of like breaking our own standards of having the tucked in look. Kind of you, know, you have to always have to wear dress shoes, but now nah, you always you gotta wear sneakers now to like show off your personality. And the uh, funny thing is, is that Ali, my boss. I kind of like made her, helped her make an impulsive decision to buy some Air Jordan threes, some black cements when they came out. Okay. Yeah, man. I'm just I'm trying to help everyone now and then, you know, when I can offer some, you know, a little bit of fashion advice when you know when they want to step away from the Sperry's and you know from the you know good old like you know shoes that you wear for like you know whatever that is, but uh, you know stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. So what, <laughs> what's a pair you don't own that you wish you owned? Pair that I don't own. Uh, man, dude, like, believe it or not, um, what was it called? Uh, for me, being, like, kind of having my, a high beast mindset, um, definitely the uh, the off-white ones. I have those Jordans. <sighs> those sh- I would die to have those shoes, man. Yeah, man. Facts, bro. Uh, that's, that's a good three grand, you know, three to four grand, but... I, I I, yeah. I've even thought of purging and getting the UNC off-whites, the Jordan ones, and... Oh, yeah, nice, those are nice too, but again, you're spending a grand. I, it, it's hard to justify spending a thousand dollars on a shoe, but man, I don't, know if, I don't know if you saw this, but I don't know if this person specifically listened to this. But shout out to Jasmine, because I don't know if you know Jasmine, but dude, she's she's the sneaker queen, man. She is she, she the one who owns the off whites? Yes, man. She's yeah. the one who wore the UNC off white ones to a music festival to Dreamville. Oh my god, no way! <laughs> serious? I couldn't do it. What? I couldn't do it. And she's all like, no, it's just shoes. I'm like, no, it isn't. No. It's trophy, man. And that's, those it was just like, it was awesome to see though, but it was so cool. That's awesome. I wish I could have copped those, but man. Yeah, it, it's, uh, I definitely would say those, but dude, um, what was it? I wanted the, um, the fear. The fear of gods? No, not the fear of gods, but the uh, Air Jordan 4s. It's like, uh, was it the undefeated pair, man? I'm, I'm not sure. Like, I, for some reason, all my shoes that I wanted to have is not clicking to me. But when I see it, I know. It's like, um, someone will probably mention this, but it's probably the fours and it's the olive ones, right? It's orange. I think it was the undefeated ones or something with fear in it. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. But, dude, those are expensive because it's like four or five grand. Wow. For those shoes. But also, I as I think of it now, the Air Yeezys, the Air Mags. Yeah, the Air Mags. Forget yeah, it. Yeah, for, Dude, those are crazy expensive, man. That's like college tuition and like two pairs. Of them. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> but yeah, man, those are what, the shoes I probably want for sure. What um? Yeah. Go ahead, but, no, I need to cut you off. So, sorry about that. But um, you know, I say within like a five-year plan. When people always ask me, what do I want to do professionally? I'm like, 
No, man, I want to do it. You know, within the five the next five years, I want to have the original 10 off-whites. Paint that Ooh. all up on the wall. Just have, like, a sneaker wall full of all my favorite shoes, from Air Maxes to, to basketball, like, old basketball shoes and, like, stuff like that. But, yeah, yeah shoes, shoes are a passion. What, um, are there any pairs that are coming up, like, releasing that you want? Uh, man, dude, like, to be honest, dude, there's a lot of shoes. For some reason, when I'm leaving the zoo, of course, there's going to be – there's an Air, Pair, Air Jordan 1s that are, like, that yellow colorway. Yeah, uh, yeah. White. I forgot what it's called. But, dude, like, for real, man, I'm going to be honest. I'm just not having – you know, it's not coming to my mind as the shoes that I want yet, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know that um, in a few weeks here, we'll get the, uh, the Air Jordan 1s, the Cactus Jack, Travis Scott ones. Right. You know, Backward swoosh and stuff like that. Those are dope. I, I, you know, I like them. I just wish they weren't brown. I don't know why. I kind of don't love the brown colorway. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel you. Yeah, just knowing Travis Scott, you, you expect them to, you know, go even more louder in that. But you know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about their resell. Oh yeah. oh yeah if you cop those retail i honestly i would resell them to be completely honest i'd get two grand for those or whatever they're gonna they're gonna sell oh, for a lot yeah that's the thing though but the thing is like now it's like because it's releasing as a general release right and like you know only still feel people are gonna get them even if you hit on sneakers like you're gonna get like what 500 600 dollars max yeah travis scott's shoes usually go for when they're you know just released or off the market stuff like that but when you get them early, like during the times of the Super Bowl and like when they were released during the uh, the Grammys, yeah, that's, things the prices are going high because you know that's when the shoes are most valuable. Because but then uh, limited. In a few months here, we will see about five hundred, six hundred dollars for these shoes. So it's not bad. Um, two shoes I really want that are coming up not till August. So I got a while to wait for these. But I don't know if you've seen the Air Jordan One, the uh, Retro Blue University Blues. They're, oh yes. Those ones. The ones, the UDC ones with the leather? Yes, with the leather. Yes. <laughs> really, really want those. Um, yes. And the the Air Jordan 3, the Tinker Black Cement. Okay. Um, I kind of really want those. I wanted the regular cements, but I still could get them, but I don't know. I kind of like, I'll just wait till the black one comes out. I think yeah, I like yeah. that colorway a lot. So those are two I got my eye on, but I'll, if I'm lucky, I'll get one at best. So. Hey, man, it's not about that. You know, you just got to, like, like I always tell people, you know, the money is temporary, the drip is forever, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you just got to keep finding more freelance projects, you know, and then you got to treat yourself to a gift to, you know, right. buy a pair of joiners, you know, that's all that matters, man. <laughs> That's that's what literally my freelance work. That my money's been going towards shoes because I bought about four See, or five funny, pairs. Like, like I mentioned, man. Like at the age, it all changes, right? Because when you're a young kid, you're impulsive. You want to buy these sneakers. You want to do this and this. You don't really have a lot of responsibilities compared to someone who's, you know, has a family already. And like, oh yeah, all this freelance money that I make is gonna go towards my kid. It's gonna go towards my car payment. It's gonna go towards this. It's like I'm like. Man, that's stressful, dude. I'm just enjoying my life. <laughs> when, um, it's like buy as many pairs of shoes as I have. Yeah, now. yeah. So that's the thing that I was kind of thinking. So yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, two last questions uh, yeah, sure. about you going to uh, Orlando. You know what? Um, what excites you about living in Florida? Because I'm gonna be honest, I I am not a fan of Florida other than the weather. <laughs> Really? Yeah, um, like the dri- people suck at driving there. Um, like the thing is, like it's tourists. It's not people from Orlando. It's tourists. You like, think? I don't know. Yes, man, dude. It's <laughs> from all over. I promise you. You you think it's not that bad? Like, I promise. Like when you get tours out of the way, I think Florida is an absolutely wonderful, functional running Fun- city. Right? Functional. <laughs> like a lot of people like. Dude, it's crazy. Like, uh, I was talking to one of the Uber drivers, and they're all like, oh, yeah, um, you know, I know families that, you know, plan this day three years in advance, you know, to go a week all out at Disney and stuff like that, and just to plan everything. So they get their own rental car, you know, they, they book their flights and stuff like that. They get their tickets, and it's like, dude, everyone's like a rental car here, bro. It's like, that's the crazy part about it. So, like, when you take all that away, if you, if you take Disney and Universal Studios out of your own backyard, this city would just be a normal fucking city. It's true. Uh, that, you know, be able to work nicely. And then, of course, the drivers. Dude, it's crazy. When, Let me tell you who has crazy drivers, bro. <laughs> Atlanta people. Atlanta? Atlanta people, really? Else, dude. 
I swear, I'm driving 80 like a regular person. Someone behind me is probably driving 90, and they think I'm, like, going slow. It's insane. <laughs> no one does that, man. Especially in Atlanta. It's crazy, dude. And very, we, we get... We don't. We get mad even if like, dude. We don't even get mad if like you. This if it turns green light and you wait twenty seconds just to finally figure that out. We don't get mad about it. Oh, uh, New so York will get mad about that. <laughs> especially people in Chicago. Like, if you don't go on and say it turns green, you're getting honked at. Oh especially. yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I think what I'm excited most of. Um, it was nice to have this. Like, I didn't think of it when I got the job at the match, but they didn't offer me. I wasn't thinking it more as of like. You know, was it because I loved Orlando as a city or was it because of something else? And I thought of something else. That was me. Like, for me, it was always a dream of mine to work for an NBA team, right? Because me working for an NBA team allows me to, you know, low-key get the Air Jordan 1 Royal 1, which is the same circuit, <laughs> to match my game day office. I have a little plan like this. I just to myself there. So uh, I have that in mind. And then, uh, okay. you know, also the um, – you know, it was just to get the, all the Vince's gear, and you know the culture around the NBA is so awesome, right? Yeah. You get players who are wearing Gucci, Off Whites, and all these hype brands, right? Just to flex. That's their way of flexing when they walk through the arena, right? You know, because you know how Russell Westbrook is yeah. in his office. And I love that man, and that's how I, that's how I, my my passion for sneakers, my passion for culture, and like you know hip hop and stuff like that all started because of the NBA. So. For me to get a job with the Magic, that's awesome. I was thinking of it more as like the culture and like the NBA and stuff like that. I didn't think of it more as a location. Like even if somewhere like think of it as Phoenix or um, where it's hot, I wouldn't even care about that. But the culture that the NBA has is what I really sold me into, you know, getting a job with the NBA. So you um you big at going to Disney World or Universal? Like you go there a lot? Oh my gosh, my legs, dude. I, I, <laughs> Dude, I went there for spring break, dude. I was walking like an 80-year-old, man. Like, the thing was, like, so hectic, man. So many people, so much waiting, so many tours. It's, like, one of those kind of things, dude. But um, just to have that in my own backyard now, it's, just, like, I know what to do on the weekend now when I have absolutely nothing to do. So, yeah. You know, which is cool, so. Nice, nice. Um, It's funny. My fiance has a season pass to Disney, so, yeah, so, yeah we, we go down there quite a bit. But, uh. Huh. Maybe I'll see you around there, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. Let me know. You know, if you want to go to the Magic game. And this is for anyone listening, too. If you're ever in, Ma- if you're in, ever, ever in Orlando, you know, hit your boy up because I can hook you up with tickets if we're playing. But do not contact me if the Lakers, the Warriors, or <laughs> any of the top four seeds are playing the Magic, okay? Because I'm going to be taking those tickets. But, yeah, man, that's, that's what I want to say. So. You got to um, – is it nice to switch from, like, yellow and black to blue and white? Um, it's nice, but, but dude, I'd rather have two primary colors because you get the more options, right? True, true. Yeah, dude, it's crazy because when Mizzou, when Ali was wanting to do the yellow background, so I was like, there's no way I'm doing this. So when we finally adapt to it, it was cool to see, man. It cool because we know how the Rams branding is online. When they saw all that stuff, that inspired me for real. Um, but that was cool to see, and then uh. But yeah, it's nice just going to the bloom, the bloom black and bloom white. So we'll get this. I'll get to see eventually here in June um, how they run things here and just really, just really try to make us on the social presence. So hopefully people get to see more of our work and see get to see more of what I love doing. And uh, but yeah, I'm really excited, man. But yeah, yeah, I'm excited for you, Tony. And uh, you know, again, I appreciate you coming on. Um, it has been a blast guys. If you don't follow Tony already, it's at underscore Tony, Tony win on Twitter. He's one of my favorite follows cause you are always tweeting, always got something funny to say. Uh, definitely got to check him out. Once again, Tony, appreciate you coming on. Best of luck with the magic and congratulations on graduating from college, man. And hey, thank you, man. Appreciate it for me, you know, bringing me on the show. I know I have mentioned a lot of confusing points, but I'll, you know, you can write that all down. Just try to put the points together, obviously. But, uh, you know, if you ever want to talk sneakers, if you ever want to talk about life in general, you know, holler at your boy. Just let me know. You want to you wanna come to the Magic? You want to go to Disney? Let me know also. It, only if I know you really well, but if you're some person who just followed me and decided to finally, you know, you know, DM me about those kind of things, then, you know, I'm not going to talk to you. So, it's <laughs> <gonna be too. laughs> so if you want free shoes, Disney, and games, go hit up Tony. <laughs> Play. Yeah, I can <laughs> 
I'll see what I can do. So yeah. Um. All right. Once again, appreciate it, Tony. That is it for the Bad Design Podcast. Thank you guys for listening. Hopefully, we'll have another episode soon. And uh, see you soon.